But let's bring in Martin Pebble, his private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country. Counsel, good evening. Thank you for joining us here on Ghana tonight. Good evening, Mr. Kansi. Great. Now, yeah. uh, and, and, I, and I start off on that point that Dennis just ended about the Attorney General's position that the absence of the lawyers of the speaker in court today amounted to the disrespect of, of the courts. Well, Justice Amado Tanko, you know, sought so to draw his attention to the fact that it is for them to determine whether it was disrespect or not. But w w how does that strike you? Well, that, what, what Justice Amadou Tanku said was the right thing. That was the right thing. You know, uh, I don't know if he played back. There was another part where he asked the Attorney General if he had reached out to Tadio Sori, lawyer for the Speaker, right? Once Tadio Sori wasn't present, with the fact that he wasn't present cannot lead to a conclusion that his absence there was willful, etc. So the best thing to do is to find out. So it's good that Justice uh, Ahmad Tanko drew uh, Godfrey Dami's attention to that option, that if you don't see your learned friend, you should be able to reach out. I know Tado Sorry has a huge reputation at the bar. He's one of our best. So he, uh, generally, you don't find uh, adverse comments about him like that. So it's good that Justice Tanko drew his attention that you have to ask about his welfare, ask about his whereabouts. Don't just stand there and start making comments. <laughs> That's what Godfrey that means. You know, he's not learning. You see, he's not learning that this is side comments are becoming one too many. You see, at the last sitting of the court, all the submissions he made, the Supreme Court just ignored them. Yeah, so he has to learn that, listen, there are times that you have to be gracious. If the man hasn't come, don't go on and on and on about him. No, no, it's not the best. You see, the last time, on the 30th of uh, October, all the arguments he made, you see, the court didn't dignify him with a response. So Godfrey Dami needs to learn that it's not everything you need to comment about. No, it's not everything you have to comment. To, today, that was... There was one point that he made that, in fact, that emphatic statement that, in his view, Speaker Michael Quay's ruling on the Fomena case was illegal. It was unconstitutional and so cannot form a basis for any decision forthwith. Oh, obviously, it's in his favor or it's convenient for him to make that comment today. You know, because if you were to say... Okwe got it right, what it would mean is that then this case would follow the same pattern. That is to say they would lose the, this case of the vacation of uh, the four seats by the various MPs. So it's convenient for the MPP and for Godfrey Dami to say that Okwe got it wrong so that, that Okwe's ruling does not come back to, you know, pound or bite them. That's just it. That's just it, really. I see. But on the, on the bit about how that also gives pointers of, of really how, how the, the, the case is going, the path the case is going to take going forward, I, I want us to take a listen to, and very much uh, if you indulge me, we're also live on 3FM 92.7. Let's take a listen to the Attorney General making the argument that to the extent that Parliament is, is constituted by a certain number of MPs elected to represent constituents through an election, it is only part the election and the election process that can alter the constitution of parliament, right? And, and I'll find out if that's consistent with your understanding of what the law really says. But this is the Attorney General on the constitution of, of, of parliament. Take a look. So far as parliament is constituted by a certain number of MPs or members of parliament representing those constituencies. The composition of parliament shall not be altered except as prescribed for in the constitution. So no person or authority with all respect has the power to make any decision at all or construe the constitution in a way which will alter 
or change the composition of parliament except as it is in the constitution. So, Council, that's the Attorney General there, that to the extent that parliament is constituted by a certain number of MPs elected to represent cons constituents, the composition of parliament shall not be altered except as prescribed by the constitution. You see, this is tautologous, right? This is what? Um, uh, let's say security. We are going round in circles, actually, instead of the tautology. It's going round in circles. The <laughs> security is that the constitution has prescribed in Article 91, sorry, 97 Clause 1, how a member of parliament will lose his seat. And it's very clear in June that if you are an independent, this uh, uh, is H, let's start with H, this uh, is in ACMS case. If you're an independent member of parliament and you join the political party, if so facto, you lose your seat. So, Mr. Kansi, as we are talking, isn't it an indisputable fact that ACMA has joined the MPP? Yes, it is. Isn't it? It, 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 it is. It is a fact. Yeah. So, that's it. Straight. Pro tanto. If so facto, just by that very fact alone, ACMA will lose his seat in this parliament. It's not by any future parliament. It, the, the Article 97... It's not talking about future parliament. Then you go to the other parliamentarians, 91, uh, this, uh, hey, why do I say 91? 97 plus 1, three. okay? Mm -hmm. It says, if you're a member of a political party and then you seek to become independent and remain in parliament, as we speak now, the MPP constitution is very clear that if you... If they fill the candidate for parliamentary elections and you, an MPP member, also seek to contest that election, you automatically, and I'm emphasizing automatically, lose your membership. That's Article 3, Clause 9. Yeah, 3, Clause 9. I'm sure, Mr. O'Kansi, you've read it in the past. Yes, indeed. So, Mamle, uh, Kwejo uh, Asanti, MP for Sum. Uh, Peter Kwachiaka, that's MP, I mean, Free Central, he's NDC. And then the third one. That is, uh, uh, that's the former member of parliament who is now contesting on the ticket of the MPP. Yes, uh -huh, we've dealt with this already. So mm -hmm. these three, Kujasanti, Mamle, and then Peter Kwachiaka, they were members of political parties, and now they filed as independents. So we are clear that the MPP constitution says if you file as an independent to contest an MPP member, you automatically forfeit your seat. So that's it. Right. So I'm expecting the Supreme Court to come up with an interpretation that will give meaning to the MPP constitution. They sponsor the candidate. They sponsor the MP. And they say if you do such a thing, you automatically forfeit your seat. It makes sense. Because, you see, political uh, parties, all right, deal with sensitive information, et cetera. Okay. So they cannot afford to continue to have moles, open moles. Of course, some people are secret moles. But when you have an open mole in your campaign, very brazen, openly like this, no, they, it cannot be tolerated. Right. So if you want to see how the rule will work, can you imagine Atu forcing... Uh, a leader of the NDC, of course, I'm tempted to say the majority in parliament, but because of the Supreme Court ruling, I will reserve comment on that. But can you imagine Atu Fossi saying that he's now going to run on the ticket of the MPP and still wants to be leader and, and, and a parliamentarian? Or turn it the other way, Afenio Markin, saying that he's running on the ticket of NDC and MPP will continue to tolerate him. No. If right. you come to, outside these examples, in contract, there's an area called laws in restraint of trade. There are some jobs that have some sensitive information. If you leave the job today, you cannot go and work for an, a, a competitor immediately. No. We have what we call garden leave. Some of them, your contract will say sit at home for six months. Others, one year. And you think the member of parliament, the information that 
parliamentarians share among themselves policies, etc. I think there are certain information that are not sensitive. So it's not new that if you leave your party and go to join another party, you should lose your seat. No, it's not new. So Council. I'm hoping that the Supreme Court will be uh, following. We'll see how that, that plays out tomorrow when the Supreme Court delivers its ruling on this matter. But I do appreciate your time. Thank you so much for joining us, Martin Pe Pebbles, private legal practitioner, one of the foremost human rights lawyers we have in this country.